Bismillah wa hamdulillah wa sallallahu ala rasulillah. This is Abu Waqiq and Face to Floor. Uh, Insha'Allah ta'ala, we're going to continue today with another short lesson talking about the attributes of Allah. Now, so far we've mentioned that, uh, we mentioned three of the attributes of Allah. We mentioned existence, oneness, and eternality. By existence, we mean that certainly the, there must be a creator. The universe could not be, the universe could not exist unless there was a creator. And because we know that the universe could not be beginningless and it could not have created itself. And we explained this some in the first lesson on the attributes of Allah Ta'ala. And then we mentioned that Allah is one, that there's only one God, there's only one creator. And that when we say that God is one, we actually mean it in three senses. One, as we just said, that God is without a partner, that there's no creator except Allah. Also, with the meaning in the sense that Allah is unique without any similar. And then in the third sense, Allah Ta'ala is without parts. Allah is indivisible, meaning non-dividable. Meaning one meaning, that God, Allah's Godhood is not shared among the creations. No one is the creator except Allah, as we mentioned. And also that Allah is not made up of parts or pieces or dimensions. Allah is clear of the characteristics of bodies. Because bodies, by necessity, they have parts and dimensionality to them. And Allah is clear of that. And also we mentioned that Allah Ta'ala, the third attribute that we mentioned is that Allah is beginningless. Allah exists without a beginning and everything else exists with a beginning. Allah is the creator and everything else is a creation. This is our belief that only Allah exists without a start. Everything other than Allah wa Ta'ala was brought into existence. It wasn't, then it was. And Allah is the one who made the things be. Allah is, again, Allah is the creator. Everything else is a creation. Whether it be light or darkness, time or space, distance or direction, the earth or outer space, or the heavens or paradise, all of these things are created by Allah. And Allah is the only one who exists without a beginning. All those other matters that we mentioned, everything else is originated. So now the fourth of the attributes that we will mention, God willing, is the attribute of everlastingness. Allah revealed in the Quran, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum, which means that Allah, there is no God, no creator other than him, and that Allah is al-hayy, al the alive, and al-qayyum, among the meanings of Al-Qayyum, it means the everlasting. And inshallah, next lesson we'll mention another meaning for the name of Allah, Al-Qayyum. So Allah's existence is beginningless, and Allah's existence is everlasting. Allah's existence is not related to time. So it's not like us, we weren't, then we were, meaning we were non-existent, Allah brought us into existence. And then from the moment we started to exist, then something else happened with us. We also what started to age. We passed through time. The earth has an age. I have an age. The building I'm sitting in has an age. The city I am in has an age. The ocean has an age. The sun, etc., etc., etc. All of these things which have a beginning have an age. Now, whether we know the age of it or not, that's different. But we know it has an age, even if we don't know the exact age of that thing, of that creation. Allah is, is, not a, is not something with an age. Allah has no beginning and Allah has no end. So Allah's existence is not something that could potentially cease. Allah always was and always is, and Allah's existence is not measured by time. So with that said, be clear that when we say, for instance, about some of the creations, operative word here, creations, that some of the creations, they have, these are things that have a beginning, some of the creations are everlasting. They have a start to their existence. And then their existence is perpetual. It does not come to an end. So an example of that would be paradise and the hellfire. These are creations. They have a beginning, but they have no end. And their existence, although everlasting, is related to the passage of time. 
So paradise and hell are day after day after day after after day after day into the future for infinity. So a future infinity is acceptable. A past infinity is not acceptable. And we talked about this in the first lesson when we talked about the proof for the existence of Allah that you cannot have a past infinity because if someone made that claim, it would be impossible to reach the present. We reach the present, that means the past came to an end. That means the past is not infinite because whatever would be infinite would not come to an end. So from that we can know that the past has to have a start. And Allah Ta'ala is the one who initiated, who originated the creations. And Allah is the one who sustains and maintains the creations. So paradise and hellfire, they are everlasting because Allah specified, designated them to be everlasting. They are not everlasting in and of themselves. They're only everlasting because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala willed for them to be everlasting. So this is the belief that hellfire or, and paradise are creations that last forever into the future. Allah is the creator. Allah is, as is mentioned in the Quran, Allah is al-awwal and al-akhir, the beginningless one and the everlasting one. And by when we understand from that, that Allah's existence is not related to time, it's not related to change, it's not related to development, Rather, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is perfect and Allah Ta'ala is clear of any originated attributes. Allah Ta'ala is the creator, the one who absolutely does not resemble or need any of the creations. Walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala rasulin